Why is construction so stressful? And what are some things that we can do to cope with it or to actually overcome? This is important to know because once you know why, then you can fix it. That's what we're gonna talk about now. So here's the bottom line. Construction is so stressful because we make it stressful. <laughs> like, honestly, I think sometimes we're just addicted to adrenaline. Is construction hard? Yes. Is it harder than manufacturing? I think in a lot of ways, it's not as technological, but being out in the elements, in the heat, in the cold, in the chaos, stick building things can be pretty crazy, especially at like these heights that we have to build way up in the air down below in the ocean, all over in crazy terrains, right? So it is difficult, right? Let me say this, it doesn't have to be as stressful as it is today. It's mainly stressful because we don't plan projects, we don't use the right systems, and we do not train our people in this industry anymore. That's why it's stressful. And if we wanna unstress ourselves, we will get back to fixing those problems. You've all probably seen the LinkedIn or Facebook little meme that shows some cave people pulling their cart along and they have square wheels and somebody's there offering them a round wheel and they're like, hey, hold on, hold on. We don't have enough time to do that. We're busy pushing this cart. When they could just stop and get round wheels and speed up. Now, this is a ridiculous little meme because obviously that never happened and nobody would even invent square wheels, but the, the purpose or the moral of the story is the same. We were so chaotic and frantic in our industry and stressful that we never take time to fix our stress. And so if we wanna fix the stress, we will do three things. We will bring respect back to our industry, we will stabilize all of our operations and systems, and we will bring flow to the work. Respect, stability, and flow. And you know what, real quick, something that would de-stress me is if you would like this video. I just want some feedback. You can comment down there for me if you want. I will reply to you. I will know that you're getting the information and it will just soothe my feelings. So hopefully, you can do that for me, like and comment below. So let's take a task here for a, just a representative example. Let's say that you were going to change out the motor in a vehicle. Let's do it like we were going to do it in construction. So let's follow these key chaotic stressful steps to do something as simple as changing the motor in your car. Or if you don't like that example, baking a cake. Or if you don't like that example, setting up a birthday party. Whatever it is, take any task that comes to your mind where you're thinking, yep, it's a pretty normal task, I think I can win at that, but let's do it the way we do it in construction and see if you feel the same way. So you're gonna go ahead and start this activity, but you're gonna follow these steps. Number one, do not take the proper time to plan this activity. Just rush into it and commit before you have made any plans. Number two, make sure that you're rushing, that you're not taking the time to do it thoroughly and properly. Make sure that you're in a hurry, whether that's external or internal or mental. Three, do the task where halfway through, you have to transition it to two other people without very much overlap. Meaning if you're baking a cake, that when you're preparing the activities, that you immediately with very little preparation have to transfer that to someone else. When you're about to bake it, that they would transfer that to a third person. Number four, let's pretend in your cake baking or your motor changing or whatever it is, that you set up everyone that's gonna help you with a contract that's specifically worded and designed to piss each other off and fight as enemies instead of partners. Number five, also, when you could do something yourself, pretend you hired it all out to trade partners and to vendors. And so you don't actually do anything yourself or know how to do it yourself. Six, let's assume that if it was a motor or a cake that every motor you're gonna change is gonna be brand new, no rhythm, and that every cake is gonna be brand new, no rhythm. So that everything you do every day is new, chaotic, and unprecedented. Number seven, let's pretend you're doing it without any known processes. You can't look up on, on YouTube or Google to find out how to bake that cake. You're gonna have to figure it out from scratch. You're not gonna be able to reference some kind of maintenance manual or instructions or trainings. You're gonna change that motor by yourself. Just figure it out. Number eight, uh, also pretend in your little analogy in your mind that there's nobody in your house or anyone on your street that has ever changed a motor or baked a cake before, so they can't help you. Number nine, let's go ahead and spice this up and get it really like construction. Let's make sure that you have somebody standing over you 
pushing you, rushing you, criticizing you, and making you go faster. And whether you're baking a cake or doing a motor change, let's pretend that all of your helpers, that you actually move them all into separate rooms with walls and doors so that you couldn't actually see what each other was doing or collaborate. Everything was siloed. The only way you could communicate was through email. Once you're done with that, now you'll get the idea of what it's like to work in construction. And you'd probably be like, Jason, I would never bake a cake or change a motor on a car or do anything like that. That is so stupid. Everything that you just did literally made it slower, made it harder, and yep, you guessed it, made it more stressful. That's the answer. <laughs> That's why construction is as bad as it is. Everything that I just mentioned there happens in construction. That's how we design it, right? That's how we intentionally set things up. And it's ridiculous and it's gotta stop. And that's not even like the whole story. That's like one 5,000th of the problem. And you can just keep multiplying that, multiplying that with all the different stupid things that we do in construction because we never actually think about how we would just bake a cake or how we would just change a motor or how we would just like take the car to a car wash, right? Follow simple steps. Instead, we make it overly complex. And so I'll go back to the original solution. If you wanna be less stressed, you will plan your projects. If you wanna be less stressed, you will use the right systems. And Tact, Last Planner, and Scrum will be on that list, including, you know, uh, Design Build, uh, Integrated Project Delivery, CM at Risk, IPD, um, a number of others, but you will use lean methods. And number three, we'll train our people so that we have a good body of knowledge and that we have the builders in the field doing great work. And so if you take time to plan, if you get rid of the rush, if you get rid of the handoffs and work together as an integrated team, if you fix your contracts so you can work together, if you partner with your trade partners instead of brokering everything out and being disconnected, if you get some repetition in these buildings and use prefab and use tact, if you get the right system, if you get the right experienced people, if you've partnered with the owner and get that abusive relationship gone and really partner in a meaningful way, and you build a team with proximity and meaning and purpose, then you will have the ability to start reducing your stress. I will say that you will never be as unstressed as you want to unless you have a personal organization system, team balance and health amongst the project team, unless you take your time off, unless you create stable systems, and unless you actually use the TAC production system. But here I will pause and say, assuming that you've done all that, there are four key techniques that you can use to unstress yourself. Number one, stress comes from knowing that you have risks but not knowing what to do about them. So find your risks, put them on a risk and opportunity register, make assignments as a team, and track them weekly. Number two, Stress comes from not having a plan. So have a plan, not just the first planner plan with the schedule, but also your pull plan, your six week make ready look ahead plan, and your weekly work plan and your day plan. If you know that everything's planned properly, you'll be able to calm down and go home at night happy. Three, you stress out because you think you might have problems. So that's great, just find all your problems. And just like Gina Wigman says in Traction, IDS them, identify, discuss, and solve. Identify, discuss, and solve. Keep a list of your issues, prioritize them, and start making solutions with your project team daily, and you will de-stress yourself, at least for the problems. And number four, there, once that's all, and I have gotten to that point where I'm not worried about those things, we got a good plan, we know our risks, and we're bringing problems to the surface every day. But I'm still like, as a superintendent, like thinking, well, what if somebody has an accident? Well, what if this happens? What if neighbor is affected? What if a fire alarm goes off? What if, what if, what if? You can still, for uncontrollable risks, right? You still can have plans. So like, for instance, let's take the safety incident. I was always scared to death. Somebody was gonna get hurt on the project site. And so instead of just leaving that open and being like, well, hey, we'll figure it out when it happens, I made sure, hey, and the, this was company policy too. Now, there was a really good emergency response plan. If an emergency does happen, I will do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. I will use these people. I have done this preventative action. I have taken the time to put in place a plan that will help me to respond if it does happen. So that way I don't have to stress 
about whether or not it will. I'm taking proactive steps. I'm preventing it from happening, but I don't have to stress about it because I do know there's a plan I can grab and implement if it does. And so I am going to link you to a list of key strategies that you can implement to de-stress yourself and to two key presentations that I think you're going to love. The bottom line is this is within your control. You can enjoy your time at work. 100% is possible. I hope this comes true for you. On we go.